All right, how y'all doing? I'm back again. Let's see, I got the Black Panther T-shirt. Bam. Sorry, let me give it to you. Black Panther. Yeah, I got this during Christmas, so haven't had a shot to wear, so I decided to wear it for you guys. All right, back here with High Desert. This book right here. It is a graphic novel. I've been wanting to read graphic novels and stuff. And I found this one. And this happened to be, as you can see at the title, right? From the creator of Afropunk, James Spooner. All right. I had to stop the thing just to go get my copy of Afropunk. All right. Bam. These two people are the same person, James Spooner. I came across Afropunk years ago. Um, it's my days when I was like an avid movie watcher. And I believe I saw it. If it wasn't at a film festival, it was probably at the local um, art house theater. But I heard about it and was like, whoa, black people in punk. I knew that there was bad brains and stuff, but I thought they were exceptions to the rule. But it turns out it was a lot. And I got this and... I mean, I loved it. I loved it so much, I went and ordered it online. So I really, and I got to, I need to rewatch this. So I'm probably gonna do a review on this and stuff. But when I was in the library, I was just looking around, looking for the new stuff. And basically I came across, damn. Cause I looked and what, and this was just interesting cause I don't know. It's like this person's alone but all these other people and i looked at the fashion i was like wait a minute that's kind of punk you know what i'm saying and i looked at it and i just i just liked it and attracted to it and, and it said high desert it's like you usually don't think of people in the desert but here's this thing crowded with people and then i looked and i saw oh afro just oh i know that dude okay so i got it looked at it and da 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 and it was his story and i was like whoa i gotta get this so i just whoo, took it went home and went through it real quick you know, um, well, I didn't go through it real, real quick. I went through it through most books and stuff because it is a graphic novel and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I really loved it. And see, this gives me a little bit more background. This gives me a little bit more background on this. You know, you know, even though he talks about other black people in the punk scene all over the country because this thing, he goes all over the country and interviews them and stuff. He wanted to get bad brains, but they said no. Um... But yeah, this kind of gives me, this is where it all started, right? So he was like late 20s when he did this, but this is where it all started. So let me put this back over here and let that, hmm. Let me see if I can, well, let me turn to see if, you know what, let me put it up here. Sorry. <laughs> you know what, I don't really think this is going to, yeah. No. Ah. Ah. Well, you see it. Right? Oh, sorry. My light went out. Ow. Oh, sorry about that. All right. Sorry, people. My light went out, so I had to recharge it. So, coming back. Okay. Back to James Spooner. Basically, it goes pretty much. You know, when I looked at it at first, I thought it was like his sophomore year, but it's actually his eighth grade year. So he's 13. OK. And that's what it basically talks about. You know, that's the time period, because uh, basically, like I said, James Spooner, he created Afropunk. And after Afropunk, he had a festival, ongoing festival of Afropunk all across the country and stuff. You know, there was a website and da da da. But now. You know, I looked online to do a little research and he's done a lot of interviews and stuff because this came out last year in 2022. Um, and they updated on Afropunk and apparently he left the Afropunk franchise and stuff. And some dude named Matt turns out it's a white dude that took over. And uh, there's a lot of been a lot of criticism about the Afropunk festival across the country. And when they have it, apparently, you know, there's a lot of stuff where they criticize it and they go, and someone shows a picture, this is the RIP section 
at the Afro Punk Festival, and it's a bunch of old white people. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So a lot of controversies happen, but of course that's what happens when something, you know, punk is on the margins and black punks are like on the margins of the margins. So of course they're going to become popular and money will get into it, trendy stuff. Hey, look at me, I'm cool. And of course they co-opted this festival, but he still goes on, you know. He's a tattoo artist now and stuff. And like I said, you know, um, if you know he started the Actual Punk Festival on the website, left it, and now he's doing um, a, a graphic novel. And apparently he's going to have a, a sequel for what he's saying. So, cool. Alright, basically, um, like I said, he's about 13 up in here, 8th grade. Basically, his uh, mother just relationship, 3 year relationship ended. She was with some guy, I forgot what it was, if it was military or business, but they went down to Panama and they were there for three years. That ended, so of course they go back to her hometown, which is called Apple Valley. It's in California. Basically, it's right in the desert. That's why you have the name, the High Desert. And it's in between a place called Barstow and Victorville. You know what I'm saying? Basically, those are the two places people stop while they're going to Vegas from LA and get gas. So those are two dots. Apple Valley is between those two dots, so it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And of course, you know, this causes him to be basically there's not a lot of black people there, there's not a lot of Hispanics, not a lot of Asians, it's mainly white. Okay, so you know. And of course that causes problems because he talks about it. Occasionally there's racism there. You know what I'm saying? Um and another thing I like about this book, um in the um uh let me look because he does a thing where he he has moments where he will be talking about stuff and then you could tell it's the adult him coming in and stuff um, you know and he reviews he looks back as a 40 year old man talking about how um, stuff like you know he talks about how in order for him to get along being like one of the very few non-white people in this town he internalizes racism that he meets all the time. You know what I'm saying? And uh, then also, uh, I wish I could find a bubble, but like here, right? When he does his music, he has a very good soundtrack. Like this, right? When he's playing punk music, it has this lightning bolt thing going, right? But when he's playing like regular music, it's just a straight line. Pop music is a straight line. So he differentiates that so you could tell what's happening. You know what I'm saying? And, kinda, and it does add to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so, but I just wanted to point that out to you. You know, his style. Because, well, you know, most of it's just like this. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of grays and stuff. Not too much color. There is color up in here and stuff, but not a lot. So it's mainly just this. So it kind of works that way. And I like it kind of how it blends and stuff. I don't know. I just like it. You know what I'm saying? Especially those things where he's like an adult looking back. It's kind of like, remember in the Wonder Years, where the narrator is like a grown, like, 40-year-old man and stuff? It's like the same thing. You know what I'm saying? And stuff, but even more in-depth. Because, you know, back then he wasn't conscious. Now he is conscious about stuff. He's a vegan now. He got more into, like, feeding homeless people and squatting in places later on when he got to New York. But he, they would build it up. They were basically they were gentrifying. You know, they kind of, where he was at, the Lower East Side, they were the vanguard to gentrification. <laughs> they didn't want to be, but they ended up being just that because they would squat in the building and we would restore it and stuff and be like, okay, yeah, you come in, you come in, you come in. And they had these free food giveaways and stuff and these free, free clothing gets away. But that's later on and stuff. And he kind of talks about that and talks about the sexism in the punk scene, the racism in the punk scene. Um, the political activism in the punk scene, we'll get to that, right? Um, you know, yeah, like I said, it comes back after three years being in Panama and stuff, and it's back to the same school and stuff, but, um, you know, things have changed. He's been away a little while. He sees some old faces and stuff. You know, there's not too many black people there. It's mainly white folks, um, and he basically kind of paints it the same thing, you know, like the jocks and the cheerleaders, um, and everyone else and stuff, but he notices on his first day there, there's this black kid there. He's already punk, you know what I'm saying? He already, and he, you know, kind of jumps on these 
crowd of punk kids. And he's like, whoa, that's amazing. You know, he was just a black guy standing out, you know, because most of them just hung off in a clique somewhere, hung back. But, you know, this guy's like active and he looks at him and he was just amazed. Turns out this guy's named Ty. So he immediately like beelines to him, becomes his uh, friend and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because he really being mixed, he really didn't want to go too much white or too much black. He was trying to figure it out, you know. But Ty, he was just like this guy who just, because most of the black kids, you know, hung with the gangbangers. Even though it was very few of the blacks that were there that was part of the gang, they still hung with them and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, he just saw him as a refuge and just went towards it. But then, as he got a little bit more punk hanging with Ty, he used it as a shield to cover his awkwardness and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And anytime anyone said anything, he was just like, ah, fuck you. Okay, yeah, I'm weird. So fucking what? He used it as a shield. You know what I'm saying? To keep his, you know, hey, fuck you, I don't care. I don't care about you jocks and cheerleaders or whatever and stuff, you know. Um, but he kept good grades, so he kept passing. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, this even affected him when he was trying to get with this Asian girl and shit. And she rejected him. And she didn't even reject him. She sent a friend over like a little punk. So, but yeah. Um... You know, and then meanwhile, all this is happening. He's dealing with a whole bunch of stuff like his mom, you know, he's still dealing with the divorce because he's just 13. His parents got divorced when he was 10. She jumped into a relationship. They've been moving off and on because like even when they were married with his mom and dad, they kept on going back and forth because his dad was a womanizer, kept on cheating and stuff. Turns out his dad's been married a total of like five times and stuff. So... That was hectic there. They kept on moving in and out. and Basically, it's been constant. Dealing with divorce. Kasi has to move and make new friends. Um, and stuff. Um, and then, of course, comes back to this little piss-ass small town. And once again, he's a minority. So he's just trying to mix in. Um, right? So, but then also, all of a sudden, Ty goes off and is like, yo, man, let's start a band. And he's like, yeah. So now he has a, a mission now, and he has a group of friends. Uh, one of his friends in there named Ethan happens to be a fucking skinhead. So that's complications that'll come back later on. Um, <clears throat> so he's back in school, da-da-da, doing his thing. And then he has a Christmas trip. To back to New York to visit his dad for like about two, three weeks or something, right? He gets there. His dad's doing the same thing. You know, scamming on women. You know, he'd rather go work out with his older children from another previous marriage instead of hanging with his kid and stuff. Then one day, um, his stepmother's like, yo, kick him, see you, take him, right? So he's like, want to see these Doc Martens. Only place he can get the dark market is where the punks are at. And that's on the Lower East Side. He goes there and the guy selling the stuff is a black punk. And he starts asking him questions and da-da-da. And he's like, you know what? I get off in like an hour or two. I'll show you all around all the spots. He asks his dad. His dad's like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Because his dad wants to go off and chase chicks. So in that meantime, while he's wandering around, he's just wandering around seeing every fucking thing. I mean, like, he's like a kid in a fucking candy store, you know, because back home ain't shit. It's just a dot. It's not even a dot. It's in between two dots. And the punk scene is just garbage. He's on the Lower East Side, headquarters of the punk scene, uh, like the whole world. And his mind just gets blown and stuff, you know. And he sees record stores, uh, clothing stores, da, da, da. And he's in one of the record stores and this Dominican girl, well actually a white girl started some stuff and he got in an argument with, about sexism with this guy, right? This Dominican girl jumps in and just totally tells the guy off. She starts following him. She turns around and I'm like, stop following me. He's like, I'm sorry, you're brand new. I'm not from out of town. All the stuff you said is right. I just want to know about it. So she, instead of like telling him, get the hell out of here, she starts schooling him about his consciousness, about you know, all the wrong that's going on in the world. He told, he tell, She tells him, about all of the food drives, the clothing drives, uh, how they're uh, squatting and rehabbing buildings. She takes them to a little sort of clubhouse. It's not a clubhouse. It's like a little club that they're doing and stuff. And places where they also organize things for the neighborhood and stuff. Yeah, she just blows his mind, right? Then they say goodbye. 
And then he meets up with the black guy from the clothing store, right? So then he takes him to this <clears throat> hangout joint and he meets his friends and they're like, it's way more diverse than the um, place back in Apple Valley, right? Like he meets a skinhead there, right? But the skinhead is a shark. Those are skinheads against racism, right? And he's like, whoa, there's a skinhead that's not racist. They're actually fighting against racism and then they start playing all types of stuff they start instead of just playing punk music they play um, um a rap and they know all the words reggae know all the words they play pop know all the words they play disco and he's like whoa y'all listen to everything what the hell and no one is like they're conscious politically but no one is like forcing anything on they're more and more chill hey you got your thing you got your thing you got your thing that or not right even to a point where one guy some other punk calls James uh, a faker because of something he has on his jacket, right? So, But they stand up to him and end up beating the guy's ass. So this blows his mind. He's just like, man, I got to get back here, right? You know, so he has this awakening, right? But then he gets back... Oh, yes. These people later on, he'll come back there to New York and that'll be his family. Um... Right, he gets back from his vacation. Right, same old crap. One of his friends dies. Apparently, it was like a suicide or something, and no one knew. You know what I'm saying? Um, apparently, she was suffering from some type of something. I think it might have been bulimia, or she might have been stab cutting herself. But she kills herself, and that really fucks up things. And that really puts a damper. And he basically tries to avoid the friend group and stuff. It's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? But he perseveres. Um, you know, he meets up with people. They talk, finally. You know, it turns out everyone's avoiding everybody in the fan group. Um, and, oh, sorry. My light. Everybody's avoiding everybody in the fan group. But then they get back together and they work it out, right? Then it comes to the end. Basically, at the end, that's where it all goes to shit. Basically, pretty much, that remember that skinhead I talked about, Ethan, in the band? It turns out his older brother's skinhead, and he just following along his older brother, right? Well, his older brother pressures him to set up James, right? So, he calls James. It's like, yo, a party is going on. There's going to be a punk band there, blah, blah, blah. You're going to go? Yeah. Right, and then they show him hanging up, and all the skinheads are behind him, like, Yeah, you did the good thing. Da, da, da. They get to the show, everyone shows up. Right, he points out James. Right, instead of going for James, right, they end up going, they end up getting Ty. Right, and they pull him out. They're like doing like a the mosh pit thing where they run around in a circle and beat on each other, and da da da. And they pull Ty out instead of James. Right. Take him out to the back and start beating his ass and stuff, right? And Ethan is there, and he's like, no, not him. He's like, no, fuck that. A nigga's a nigga, right? Beat him. And he's refused to beat him, so he goes back to the thing, to the stairs, right? And then they go, I knew your brother was a pussy, blah, 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 blah. And then they leave, right? One of the friends, a female friend, comes out and is like, Ethan, what the... Who's that over there? What the hell happened? He gets pissed off like a little bitch and says, move the hell out of my way. Then they go and he, she calls James. James comes out. They both meet Ty. Ty's been beat up, right? The thing about it afterwards, right? Because I can understand that's a big thing. Ty doesn't want to do anything about it, right? He's recovering. The girl and James meets him. They're in the car and he's like, yo, man, what you want to do? Well, I don't want to do nothing. I just want to leave. You know. He's being this braggart. This cocky guy the whole damn time, right? The whole fucking time, right? Now he gets beat up by a fucking dude he knows, a guy who's his friend and bandmate, and he doesn't want to do anything. So, of course, James like, what? What? But then he tries to put it back off to James like, man, you never stood up for yourself in life. And James like, man, fuck that. This is about you. And stuff. This is wrong. This is an injustice. Don't you want to do something about it? And he's just like, man, whatever. And he does that a lot throughout the, throughout the whole novel. Anytime there's something that comes up, you know, he's cocky a lot of the time. But then anytime something difficult or hard comes up, 
he just goes, what else? Which really proves how much of a pussy he really is. You know, he goes around like a peacock, da da da. But then when trouble comes, he just goes with Ev and just da da da. You know, then he looks to the girl because she's actually a writer on the school newspaper, right? And she's all he's conscious herself and wants to talk about this and that. And he looks at her like, don't you want to do something too? And she's just like, oh, I don't know. But it turns so they both basically punk out. Then later on, Ty gets back in a punk group with Ethan same dude who set him up and got him beat the fuck up you know what i'm saying so yeah that's kind of how it uh goes so yeah and so basically um that's not the end of the novel basically that pretty much mm, kind of da, 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 da. so james just accepts it right but he doesn't join in the group right basically it turns out his mom was planning because she saw how him being with all these punks, he was kind of getting in a little bit of trouble. Not major trouble, but you know, he gets suspended, this and that, talked to, um, after school detention, da da da. Speaks to like the principal or somebody, and the principal says, Yo, listen, James is very creative. He has a mind, and he has no outlet here. And that he could put, that will probably, he will probably turn all this creativity and thinking into something negative. He's already down the road. You need to get him a place where he can have an outlet. So the mother being, she decides to move back to New York. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Like, yeah, I got to charge these things. Sorry. I'm shooting after I shoot another one. But anyway, so she decides to move. So at the end of the school year, they get up and go. You know what I'm saying? Um, he barely sees Ty. He's, he, watches, he goes to the show where Ty and Ethan are in this band together. Um, the girl, the writer, I forget her name, she um, comes to see him off and mother, you know, the mother goes off. They go off to New York. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like that movie, uh, Karate Kid, where he leaves New Jersey and goes to L.A. Well, he's going from California to New York. And uh, basically, you know, he talks about how he joins back up with um, the black friend he knew. And uh, they get conscious and they basically run the stuff I told you, you know, they run a food place, uh, food, clothing, they restore stuff and he gets accepted into a school for performing arts and stuff. And he makes a band and blah, blah, blah. They didn't go too much into it. You know what I'm saying? Um, in the interviews I've seen, you know, he's talked about it and stuff. But yeah. That's how he continues his life. And apparently there's going to be a sequel. So I'll be looking out for that. But yeah, you know, I really like this book. And it really explains more about this right here. Because we meet him afterwards, right? But here it kind of starts. This is where the journey starts. He eventually ends up here, but he starts here. And he'll basically come out with another book explaining even more his adventures in New York. But yeah, hey, I like this book. I've read a couple of other graphic novels. I can't remember which ones, because I read so much. Uh, but it's very good, it's easy to read. Um, it, it is not light, because he goes into a lot of stuff about society and social relations and talks about his veganism and stuff so it it's told in an accessible way but it's a lot of heavy stuff you know what i'm saying and he looks back and how he basically how punk is an expression of him how punk kind of gives him confidence resilience and a voice for stuff that's going on in him you know what i'm saying and it's really nice to see how you know, he just didn't pop up here. It was basically an evolution, and this is the start of the evolution. So, um, I recommend both of these. Like I said, I'm going to rewatch this and try to do a review on this. You know, because I liked it. As you see, I bought it, you know, and um, I saw it at a festival or art house when no one knew about it, you know, but I was so impressed. I ordered this online. And basically, I've kept up. I found out about this, kept up with it. And, uh, you know, his next book, Continue On, His Adventures in New York, I'm going to see that and bring it to you guys and stuff. So, hey, like I said, you know, James Spooner, The High Desert, graphic novel. Um, it's deep, just like a regular novel, and I recommend it and stuff. So, 
check it out.